Okay, welcome. Um, I'm going to tell you today about the MSc in Energy Science at Trinity College Dublin. My name is Stephen Dooley. I'm Associate Professor um, in the School of Physics at Trinity College and my research expertise are on uh, fuels, emissions and combustion principally and also chemical reaction kinetics. So I'm the director of the MSc in Energy Science, so I usually begin by telling you just about energy utilization and what we're trying to achieve with the program. So today, most of our energy comes from uh, fossil sources, actually about 80 to 83 percent, depending on the jurisdiction, is from petroleum, coal and natural gas. And that stuff produces carbon dioxide that is uh, precipitating climate change. So what we need to do is train a uh, a generation of students and actors that can understand how to minimize our reliance on these energy stores, natural gas, coal, petroleum, and maximize and increase the share in energy utilization from renewable sources such as biomass, wind, hydroelectricity, even nuclear and also solar power. So this type of chart here shows the energy makeup in this example of the United States uh, by energy supply. And what you can see is that today it's still mostly fossil energy. So even after working on this for 30 years, we're, we're relying on fossil energy. The second thing it shows is how much of the energy is wasted. Okay, so about two thirds of all the energy embodied in these energy sources gets wasted and only about one third is used for useful work. So the other mission of the energy science master's degree at Trinity College is to minimize this box, so minimize the amount of energy we reject and maximize the amount of energy we get to use for useful work. And that balance is about understanding the sciences of energies. Okay, And the same on the other side here, in order to minimize the fossil sources, we need to understand the science factors that uh, can allow us to use more renewable energy sources. So while we're doing that, You'll all be familiar at this point with charts like this. This is the CO2 concentration in the atmosphere. So historical numbers and then projected numbers depending on which one of these paths, the red one, the black one, the orange one, the blue one, that we choose. And our choice of these paths will depend on what energy technologies, sustainable energy technologies we're able to deploy and how well we can get them working and also how affordable we can get them working. So energy science is about knowing what the technical uh, relations of each of these renewable energy sources are, but also understanding the um, affordability and the convenience factors that allow uh, fossil fuels to be widely used around the world. So by training a new generation of actors in the dynamics, the particulars of, that underpin each of these scenario choices, we hope that we can push uh, humanity, society, onto either the orange path or the blue path or maybe some path in between but where we don't want to be is this black path or the red path so this connection between energy utilization and the environment is what produces climate change right now and the reason that we choose fossil energy technologies is because of the connection between energy and the economy because fossil energy technologies are really affordable okay so they give cheap energy that is very convenient to use and can underpin economic growth even in very poor nations. So what we train in the energy science is to decouple uh, each of the points of this triangle. We want to break the connection between energy and environment. We want to break the connection between energy and economy. And the way that we do that is by teaching the students about all of the pertinent science, the physics, the chemistry, the engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, and also the environmental factor um, that uh, operates within this triangle. So how we do that at the master's level, we're focusing on higher order uh, learning skills. So less remembering and understanding, but more about applying, analyzing, analyzing, evaluating, and even creating. So we call this here energy environment economy trilemma. So we need to break these connections and that's the purpose of the MSc in energy science. So a couple of, of principles of energy science that we teach. So the first thing in order to decouple the uh, points of this triangle is that one needs to appreciate the scale of energy utilization. It's absolutely enormous. So that means any technology that's going to make a significant dent in global CO2 emissions also needs to be massively scalable. 
So we teach the students about how scalable and the issues that limit um, the scalability of renewable energy technologies. The second one is efficiency. So we need the uh, technologies to work efficiently. We mean that scientifically. So the thermodynamic efficiency that I pointed out in the first slide, but also we teach the students about the wider efficiencies. We need, it to, we need energy technologies to achieve an economic efficiency. So a good use, a good utilization of the natural resource. We need it to be a social efficiency, so to have everything affordable by everybody around the world, and also to allow for a private efficiency in the generation of profit, so that there's an incentive there on the actor to deploy the technology. So we, we show the students about this in the context of renewable energy technologies and conventional energy technologies. And then the big factor is cost. So cost uh, of a unit of energy is actually principally a scientific factor, and we show the students how that is. It's because of the quality of the raw material energy supply that's used, the affordability and the recyclability of the materials that are used. Okay, so the course itself is 12 months full time. Uh, it's 90 um, ECTS, 90 credits. You can read all about it here at our webpage. It's uh, organized into six taught modules. Um, so the important thing to say here is that the students that are, are sitting in our classrooms in the Energy Science MSc uh, come from all different technical backgrounds. They come from chemistry in my school here, physics, chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, electronic engineering, environmental science, uh, and other backgrounds, and they all sit together. So the first thing we need to do is we need to teach the students all they need to know about the essential sciences uh, that underpin conventional and renewable energy technologies. So we do that in what we call the Introduction to Energy Science. It's a 10 credit module comprising 60 lecture hours. So this is the first thing that happens. Then we move into a module called Conventional Energy Sources and Technologies, 40 lectures, 20 laboratory hours, uh, adding up to 10 credits. And the purpose here is to explain to the students why conventional energy technologies work so well and why they lead to affordable energy. Because it's important that they have an understanding of this stuff so that they can configure renewable energy technologies to compete on price with conventional energy technologies. This is the only way we're going to lead to widespread deployment. Concurrent with this in semester one, we have electrical power generation and distribution. And all of these top modules, the core modules as we call them, are 40 lecture hours and 20 laboratory hours. This one also were 10 ECTS. In semester two, we move to sustainable energy sources and technologies and number one and number two, where we teach the students about photovoltaics, solar cell technologies, so solar energy, carbon dioxide capture and storage, biomass, biofuels and hydrogen, so bioenergy there, electrochemical cell and other battery technologies, and then wind energy generation and storage. And then at the very end of the second term, we finish everything off with a module on the environmental management of our energy utilization. So we show the students the principles of a circular economy, how recyclable um, devices are, um, and also about nuclear safety and environmental impact. And this, this module, this sub-module, the series of lectures, is taught by an external lecturer from the European Atomic Energy Agency. And then finally, in the summer months, um, we have a 15-week research component. Um, which is comprised of two weeks of reading and proposing and two weeks of reporting at the start and at the end. And in the middle, there is 10 weeks of full-time, uh, 40 hours per week research. And this research is carried out either in one of our research laboratories here at Trinity College or in uh, an industry setting with one of our industry partners. This is worth 30 credits. Within that, there's also five credits of communication, reporting and presentation training. Now, I should say, uh, as it occurs to me, the research component, the MSc in Energy Science is run across four schools here at Trinity College. We have where I sit in the School of Physics, the School of Chemistry, the School of Engineering, and the School of Natural Sciences, the Department of Geology there. So the students have a wide choice in terms of which uh, point of the energy spectrum they would like to work on and which different technology they would like to work on for the research component. Okay, there's a large history of uh, distinguished science here at Trinity College. Um, so you, the students come here, we come into a very learned place. 
We have here the 1951 Nobel Prize, actually from the School of Physics that I work in, and the students will actually be sitting in the Schrodinger Lecture Theater where this fellow, Ernest Walston, taught. And we have a more recent Nobel Prize in uh, Physiology or Medicine from 2015. This fellow here, William Bill Campbell, was a Trinity College undergraduate. So this is the type of place that you will be coming to. Dublin itself is a, a capital city, a very vibrant, multicultural um, and happening place. This is a photograph of the city centre and Trinity College is right here just behind the Twitter headquarters and it's in the very middle of the city centre. In fact, it's the landmark for the city centre. And so what you can see within the city centre is there's a lot of headquarters for all the technical companies. LinkedIn, Google, Stripe is here, the Twitter guys are here, Facebook headquarters is over here at the Grand Canal Dock and many others. So a lot of uh, vibrancy from the people that are on there and also prospects for deployment of research and deployment of the knowledge that um, is contained in the students after 12 months of study. Trinity College is Ireland's top-ranked university uh, by quite a margin. Um, so we get the best students. It's a very good place to come and learn. And then recently, uh, we received very nice news um, from our rankings in the our impact on the UN Sustainable sustainability goals. Trinity College is number 26 in the world for affordable and clean energy. So this is in part due to the activities of the MSc in energy science and also number five in the world for sustainable cities and communities, which is basically underpinned. Sustainability is underpinned by sustainable energy. Our graduates, uh, so we're now enrolling for our fourth year currently. Uh, so we have here some uh, outcomes from our graduates for the last two years. They come from all around the world. Um, this fellow, Vishnu Nair, it was all, they come from all around the world in all different backgrounds, is what I need to say. Vishnu came from India. He came from a background in electrical engineering, and uh, he has a position at the United Nations Framework for Convention on Climate Change. They're the people that try to organize how we go about reducing carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere. Prajwal Rao uh, was in the same class as Vishnu. He's a different background, mechanical engineering. And he now actually works, I have hired him in my research laboratory, Prajal works on advanced biofuels. And he's really a pretty good summary of the MSc in energy science because he came in with a background in mechanical engineering and now he works on a problem that's principally chemistry. Robert Smith is a graduate from physics undergraduate here at TCD and he now has a job working in energy trading, uh, so at an electricity trading company called Electroroute here in Dublin. From this year's graduate class, just graduated a few weeks ago, um, the end of September or so, Selena Paxton came from University of Edinburgh with an undergraduate degree in physics, and she has secured a position as a battery technologist uh, for a clean energy company in the UK, where she's from. Uh, Wei Meng Lu um, came from Lanzhou University in China with a BSc in chemistry. And Alex is a very good student. He gave himself the name Alex. He actually did his project with me, so I worked very closely with him. And I know that he now has plans to find a position in the biofuels or hydrogen industries. Okay, so in terms of some technical things about our enrollment, uh, we're open for applications right now. And we anticipate that we'll be able to keep applications open until the end of July. Uh, but we encourage you to really apply as soon as you can. The program is 12 months full-time um, and there's also a part-time option of 24 months. Uh, we're fully adapted now for the COVID-19 situation, our little friend here. Um, so what's been happening, we're well configured. All of the lecture content uh, will be issued online because um, we don't want to run the risk of students not being able to come to campus for reasons of government restrictions. And then we are allowed to perform essential laboratory and tutorial content in face-to-face -face in small groups. So this is, how, this is how we have been working, lecture release online and then the students on campus here every day for laboratory training and face-to-face -face tutorials. You can read more about the university's uh, policy and positions on COVID-19 here. And what we would ask you to do is to not waste time in securing visas and making travel arrangements uh, because those situations are all very complicated now. So this is the recording. I'll finish with this one and I'm going to be online to take your questions in, I guess, a few minutes. So I'll see you then.